cause an absolute scene. I just heard a noise. I've just heard another noise. So worried that his parents were going to punish him. Sorry, another noise. Hi guys, welcome back to Mysteries with Pippa. It's such a lovely to see you all and I really hope you enjoy this next case. This is the strange and mysterious disappearance and potentially murder of Martha Jean Lambert. So let's get straight into this case. Martha Lambert was born to parents Howard and Margaret Lambert on the 26th of March 1973. She was also a sibling to two older brothers. She was born and lived in Florida in St. Augustine's, I think. And much of the research that I did upon her childhood and who she was as a person is very contrasting and conflicting and very strange. She's described shy and kind and a loving child. And yet in other places, she's described as a force to be reckoned with and like if you made her mad, she would cause an absolute scene and kick up an absolute fuss. But whatever Martha was, whether she was a shy and loving child or a child that was deeply disturbed and easily went into a rage, three things are certain. She loved country music, she loved church and she also loved spaghetti. Martha did not have the most stable of childhoods. Her whole childhood consisted of being moved in and out of foster homes. Her father was an alcoholic and her mother had a seriously bad temper and together it was an absolute mess. It doesn't state exactly what Martha and her siblings went through. All it stated is that the reason why they were moved in and out of foster care was due to child abuse. Now that we know a little bit more about Martha and her childhood, as much as we can find out anyway, it's now important to go on to her disappearance because it is bizarre, contrasting, conflicting, and very, very suspicious. So Martha actually went missing on Thanksgiving Day 1985 at the age of 12. So it was known that she was super excited to celebrate this Thanksgiving because it would be celebrated at home with her family, which was rare because she was always in care, and that it would be celebrated at her grandmother's whom she loved dearly. So after school on Thanksgiving Day, she went to her friend's house until approximately 7.30 when then she went home. After this, things get a little bit shady. So her family have given different versions of where Martha was, when she disappeared, and it's all a little bit suspicious. So even down to what she was wearing has changed throughout the years. From a short sleeve summer dress to a two part bathing suit, who Martha is, where she went missing, the time she went missing, who she was with when she went missing, has always changed and has never stayed the same. So Martha's mother, her account is that her and Martha were at a social gathering when she arrived home and that Martha said that she would only be a minute and went off and never came back. It's always important to state as well that Martha's mother is adamant her daughter was kidnapped. Um, not sure why, but she is very adamant that she was kidnapped, she was abducted and that she could potentially still be alive. Neighbours had said that they'd seen her walking west from her house and that a green suspicious car, which wasn't native to the area, was following her. 
And her brother David, who was 14 at the time, has given various accounts throughout the years. He stated on numerous occasions he saw Martha get into a black car. He's also stated that they were around the dinner table eating um, food for Thanksgiving and that she said she was going somewhere and that when David had asked her, like, where are you going? She said, I'm not telling you, mind your own business. And she walked out the house at 12 years old and she was never seen again. David has also even stated over the years that she's still alive and that she talks to David on the phone a lot and that she's going to come out and tell investigators she's still alive, yet she hasn't done yet. And his latest kind of confession about Martha is that he killed her himself. So going back to Martha's mother, who was very, very adamant that the daughter is still alive. She's weirdly convinced with no evidence that she's involved in some kind of sex trade or sex slave trade that she's been forced into when she was kidnapped. And this is all she will believe. In 2000, David was arrested for writing a bad check when he was arrested and was interviewed by police he openly admitted freely and of his own accord he wasn't even arrested for anything to do with martha he admitted that he had killed martha and that he had buried her nearby they had checked and investigated the place where he said he'd buried her but nobody was found and he was released due to lack of evidence and the fact that he is so unreliable as his stories keep changing What's weird is then, in 2009, he confessed again to police that he had killed her, but this time he gave a very strong and very kind of compelling argument and went into great detail on why he and who he, like why he killed Martha. He said that his mother had burnt the Thanksgiving turkey and so his mother and his father had got into an argument. Now this is known to be credible and true because there are reports that they were very violent towards each other. And Martha and David and the, I don't know where the older brother was, but it was just Martha and David. They didn't want to be part of this. And so they left the house while the parents argued and they went to an abandoned college nearby. He said that him and Martha got into an argument over money because he had approximately $20 and Martha kept asking for money. He gave her $4 to spend and she still wanted more money. And so when he said no, she had slapped him across the face, being the 12 year old force to be reckoned with, as he calls her. Um, and because of that, he pushed her. She'd fallen over in this derelict college and hit her head and a metal, metal spear kind of went through it and made a big hole in her head and she died there. He said he screamed for help, but no one came. He was so worried what his parents would think that he actually buried his own sister nearby the college. Unfortunately, even though the police did believe in this story, they couldn't charge him for a number of reasons. The first one being the age he committed the crime was 14, and so he was classed as a teenager, and also because the statute of limitation had expired. They did close her case, believing that this is what happened, but they did search the surrounding grounds of the abandoned college, and didn't find anything, but they were actually slightly concerned that her body had been moved. The reason for this is that building work had taken place, mass building work, so moving big tons of dirt, uh, and they believed that her grave had been moved while this was taking place to kind of flatten the college. What's weird is, what I, what I found out the mother's reaction is to David admitting this, she's adamant that he's lying, that this isn't true, that he just likes to tell these things for attention, and that Martha is still alive. But I personally do not believe so, and I believe her brother has done this, because why else would you commit this crime? And on two separate occasions he has confessed to it. Obviously, he can't be 100% believed because of his, the, you know, his lies that he's been telling. But there has been no trace of Martha to this day. So thank you so much, guys, for listening to another case. It is a short one. Uh, it's a very strange one. Let me know what you think.
Do you think the family's involved because it is very suspicious? Or do you think she was abducted as that's what neighbours had seen? Or they didn't see her being abducted, but they had seen her walking west and a green car who was not known in the area following behind. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to quickly end this video because I am terrified of the house I am currently in and I'll hope to see you guys very soon. So you've been speaking to Mistress of Pippa today. Bon voyage!